Strategy, Global Conquest, Blood and Iron, German Unification, World War I, Risk, The Thinking Man's Game. Place those plastic troops to draw your battle lines and proceed to spend the next six hours struggling over Kamchatka, Australia, and Brazil. Places nobody has ever cared to do in history, but in risk, these spots on the map might as well be the Holy Land during the Crusades. I Let's go to Brazil, son! Let's no, go! No, we're not going! This is a game as old as time itself, going down the line for millennia to the days of Sun Tzu, when he sold the rights to Hasbro for five dollars. Risk is a game where passions can flare. <laughs> where alliances are made and broken amongst friends, making it rank just below Mario Kart and Monopoly, and how likely it will destroy your family. Risk is a timeless concept that activates the almonds of any geek that likes seeing colors change on a map. It's inspired an entire genre that has forever ruined how history nerds view the world, practically handing Paradox their success on a silver platter or in my opinion, giving us the peak of the genre, Age of History 2. It's a Hasbro game, which brings to mind the idea of a simple game that's easy to learn and somewhat quick to play. Connect the four, sink the battleship, set off a bomb in your living room. Risk is pretty simple in concept. Try to take over the world. And in true Hasbro fashion, the Risk name has been slapped onto any license no matter how poorly it fits. <laughs> and while historically it's been played on slabs of cardboard, we're in a little thing called the future. That's right, who needs actual physical dice and counting? Not me, my brain can't do math. Luckily, Risk has been a video game ever since the days of the Commodore 64. Look at all that variety, but there's one that's above the rest. So hear me out, boss. It's Risk, but we have a story. A global world war. That sounds good, Billy. But also, there's robots. Well, I guess that's that's cool. We could go for a futuristic feel. And zombies. Eh, you know, this is the late 2000s. They are pretty popular. And yetis. Wait, what? And stick with me. Cats. Cats? Like, just cats. With guns. What the fuck is happening? Risk Factions is a game I hold near and dear to my heart. It was one of the first digital games I ever bought on the old Xbox Live Store. It was slapped smack dab between Super Meat Boy, Toy Soldiers, and 1 vs. 100. And welcome to 1 vs. 100 Live. AI off. Introducing myself to the rest of the team. Spear! It's the Risk concept we all know and love, with a few features chucked in like a live grenade. What's this? A story in my Risk game. This is supposed to be my global conquest LARP. What's going on? Risk Factions has a few problems. Problems. But if there's one thing it does above all the rest, it's PRESENTATION! The campaign begins with Kojima original General Fatty McGutterpants, leader of humanity and the military industrial complex. We are at war with peace. Peace makes us weak. Peace makes us flabby. It's time for war, because peace is for pussies. Cats are nuked after the general's dog decides to lob a mortar into Cat Cuba. Exploding with the force of 20 Hiroshima's, that leaves millions dead. This 9-11 for felines is exploited by BreadTube's favorite leader, Generalissimo Meow. We have been attacked, and now the gloves are coming off! Base. Meow rightfully asks for an apology. Maybe this was all a misunderstanding. Sorry, Meow. We don't negotiate with quadrupeds. Cool it with anti-quadrupedic remarks. So humanity and cats are now at war. Too bad McGutter Pants forgot he was allergic to cats. On the brink of defeat, in the last moment, like any true American, Gut McPants pulls out the drones. Introducing Commandant 64. I see what you did there, game. He's actually a pretty loyal robot. The robots are just doing what they think they were programmed to do. Kill cats. It's just their visual is an 8-bit. Whoops. Double crab cakes. Years go by and Commandant finds himself in a bunker situation. Come out and meet your maker. 
but I am a fun one. Commandant uses one final trick up his sleeve, a nuclear bomb that for some reason is specifically programmed to create zombies. Oh fuck. I'm just realizing a decade later that this was a Nazi zombies joke. How did I miss that? You can see a pattern. One side joins the war for a bullshit reason. The only way to survive is to bring in more idiots. Which is fitting because the final faction are NFT monkeys. Arriving in the middle of a blizzard. McGutter Pants. A shell of the man he formerly was. He's sick of the war and just wants peace again. Apparently he has some special connection with the Yeti leader, Gary. Oh, oh my son. I can see you, you are a suffering. Gary. Man, that's not the voice I remember him having. Gary, in a stunning twist, betrays his one and only friend with a one-liner. What I can bring is... The pain. Even though I'm a vegetarian, I think you should kill that yeti. The yetis, for some reason, join the fight. Welcome to pain. It's never elaborated on why gutter pants and Gary have a past. Gary. And I are gay lovers. Or why the Yetis decided to continue World War III. They could have had global peace, but, you know, maybe they were bored. And that's it. That's the campaign. What, you want a resolution? Pick your faction. The only thing they affect is what color you are and what the bottom of your screen looks like. Human dice look pretty regular. Robots are mechanical. The cat dice are... Jesus Christ. Major hairball! The factions, the whole gimmick of the game are basically just avatars that react to dice rolls. This is it. This is why it's my favorite risk game. Each faction has its own little army that's lined up with weapons in hand to brutally massacre the other team. The strength of factions is just in its personality. Sure, the tween flash animation shows its age, but for a game from 2010, it's aged a fair bit better than most. The real humor, as always, is in the little horrendous puns. Warpaw Pact, the Katzmere Mueller, Silicon Gigazette. Uh? When I would play factions with friends, I remember every person had their own distinct faction they always picked. Me? I picked the robots. I found it funny when they went beep. I've kind of always wanted another version of this game just to see what other factions they might bring in next. Now, just a, a few ideas. Maybe there's a goblin faction or aliens. Perhaps a faction of birds. That'd be pretty wacky. I got a million of them, call me Hasbro. But as much character that factions had, one positive of Risk as a video game is all that dice rolling and troop counting can just be skipped. We have technology now, but sometimes technology can fail. What? While aesthetically Risk Factions looks good from a gameplay perspective, it lives and dies by the dice rolls. And despite the fact that countless Risk variations exist, this had to be the one that really fucks up. When I was a wee lad, I always believed I just had bad luck in this game, or that this was just how dice rolls could be sometimes. Well, I was wrong. Even researching for this video, going through past forums, here is often a typical battle in Risk Factions. I have 15 troops. The enemy has three. The basic assumption anyone would make is I would have a better chance at beating that three with my larger army. But in Risk Factions, anything's possible. More often than not, just by broken programming, that three will easily destroy an attacking army without losing a single soldier. There was the overkill system which was whenever a player would roll a certain number of sixes in a row, they would be able to kill twice as many troops. So, combined with the already wonky RNG and overkill, I think you can guess what often would happen. Holy shit, he just nuked you. Oh, man. <laughs> My god. He just nuked you. I saw your number drop from 16 to 0 instantly. While full of character and some pun-filled presentation, Risk Factions, tragically, is no longer on any digital store. It's uh, technically lost media. It was delisted from Xbox Arcade in 2014, and lasted on Steam until 2020, which is uh, pretty impressive. Now, whenever you look up Risk on Steam, you only get global domination. It's as if factions never really existed, which is kind of sad. But you know what, Hasbro? I remember. And while you'll forget who McGutter Pants was, I'll forever carry his name and the lessons he taught us all. Look at you. 
Saddest bunch of club sandies this side of the Sasquahanna. Godspeed.